Thanks for joining us, everyone. My name is Cal Marquise, and I work at Bywater Solutions. Um, I'm a partner engagement specialist here, um, which just basically means I try to keep our uh, customers and libraries as happy as possible. So today we are going to be talking about promoting events, electronic resources, and e-content with Aspen Discovery. So Aspen combines your library car ca catalog with e-content, digital archives, and enrichment from all major third-party vendors. It also improves relevancy and ease of use, provides reading recommendations, displays all formats of titles and one result that we call record grouping, and more. Aspen was created to give libraries and users an improved experience over other discovery systems. Um, I also just wanted to introduce a couple other team members that are here with us today. Um, if Jesse and Bill can just say a quick hello. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. Hi, good afternoon. And just a, co a couple little like housekeeping things. Um, if you do have any questions throughout the presentation, um, please feel free to use it in the chat or the Q&A. Um, and Jesse will be helping monitor that uh, throughout. Um, and just make sure you send it to all participants and panelists so that everyone can see. And we will be sending a recording afterwards of the presentation. So if you miss anything, or um, if I covered something a little bit too quickly, you will definitely send out the um, recording afterwards. So before we jump in uh, to a demo, I just wanted to share a little bit about um, Bywater and the history of Aspen. So um, our two owners, Nate and Brendan, first met at three years old in 1982. Um, they started with a, uh, the Koha ILS and uh, expanded to other open source products um, and support throughout the years. So um, we jumped to 2019, we, uh, Aspen Discovery um, was formed and Mark Noble has been developing discovery layers and um, products with like Aspen for over 10 years. So currently we um, support over 2,500 libraries and with Aspen Discovery, we're finding that it's rapidly growing and libraries throughout the country and we have uh, actually expanding to some other uh, countries as well, have really been enjoying a lot of their features and we have over 450 libraries with us right now. So with Aspen Discovery and everything we do within Aspen, um, whether it be developments or uh, the way that uh, patrons and staff are interacting with Aspen, we always go back to these four main goals. So we of course wanna maximize the patron usage of all library materials. We know that libraries offer so much more than just books. Um, books are wonderful, but we also want them to know all about things like we're gonna talk about today, like your e-resources, um, your databases, your e-content, um, and also things like events, which we're gonna to touch on today too. We also wanna make sure that it has a complete integration with your underlying ILS and your e-content providers. Um, we love Koha and we love open source, um, but if you're not on that right now, Aspen Discovery can still work with your current ILS. And of course, we wanna make it easy for patrons to use. Um, we want it to, them to quickly be able to access all the materials that they want. And we want to make it easy for staff to use because we know that everyone is doing a million other things in the library and wearing different hats. So we want all those customizations to be easy for staff as well. And just a note before we get into the demo, you're going to see a lot of different um, interfaces today. And we're going to touch on it a little bit, but just a reminder that all of these are customizable looks and feels, and they were done intentionally by the library um, during their implement implementation process and throughout. So it's just, we really wanna create a seamless experiment, uh, experience when patrons are browsing. All right, let's get into the demo. So I'm just gonna first start out by searching one of my favorite hobbies, so I'm gonna do knitting. Just a normal keyword search. As you can see, um, some suggested uh, searches will pop up right away. So a little bit just overview about searching and search results. In Aspen Discovery, we use a ferberization or um, in more simple terms, record grouping to display all the different formats of a, um, of a title. So you'll see here, we have a book, we have an e-audio book, 
um, an ebook, and even the Kindle broken out. So maybe you just really don't care what format it's in. You just want to get it right away. So you can just see clearly right away that the Friday Night Knitting Club, for example, here, um, there is a book available for me on the shelf. I can check out right now in Hoopla if I wanted to listen to the audiobook. And uh, I also have availability in Overdrive, it looks like, um, for both the Kindle and the regular ebook version. So um, another cool thing is if I'm signed in, I can just go ahead and click on this and I can get a preview um, of the ebook. It's just nice that you can quickly scan and, and compare um, what's available and you get the green for go for on shelf. Um, I know right where it's located if I'm in the library and I wanna go grab it. So it's just a really nice visual overview um, of a title. Also just another thing to note, um, we do have some facets that you can customize over on the side. For the format, again, you can clearly see what's an ebook, um, what's a regular book. Um, you can also see uh, the e-content. So if I love Hoopla, maybe I'm a power user and I know that my Hoopla items are um, available on demand, maybe I'd like to narrow it down to just a Hoopla title versus maybe something on um, Overdrive or even Canopy. But what I wanted to show you about um, promoting some of the e-resources um, and also events is this explore more box here. So explore more box is gonna show up underneath the second result in your um, Aspen search results. And it's going to feature um, a number of different things depending on the search. So it's just um, a little informative box that just adds um, a little extra to your search results. So this could include any websites that you've indexed. Um, it could be in external websites. It could be staff lists, um, e-resources, information from your archives, um, even historic photos. It's gonna depend on your library and your library's holdings. Salina Public Library subscribes to Creative Bug. So if your library doesn't subscribe to Creative Bug and I go into search knitting, I'm not going to see these same results. Now I know if I click on this and say, oh, what's Creative Bug? I can go ahead and see that um, this is a, a database that contains arts and craft videos, including painting, knitting, crafting, and sewing. I just discovered this new resources that I didn't even know about just by searching knitting. Another thing that you'll notice right away is that there's a teen takeout craft kit and also an adult take and make craft kit. So we can click right on these to see these upcoming events. So this looks like it's coming up next week. It's November 1st. I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. And as you can see, it's hyperlinked which is really nice. So Salina Public Library subscribes to Library Market. So we can currently connect um, Aspen Discovery with Library Market via APIs. If you have another library calendar provider, you can index your library events. They'll still appear in your search results. As a patron, I can go ahead and just sign up right from here and register and also see where it's located and get all this information. But again, even if you don't subscribe to um, an external um, events calendar manager, you can index your results so that they can still pop up and that you can recommend events that relate to your patron searches. And as you can see, I even have a, a list of four other related searches to my knitting search. All right, let's go back and do a different search. So one of the most popular children's programs um, I know when I was working um, in the public library space was um, our Lego. We had a monthly Lego program where kids would come in and they would make a different theme every month. Let's say I'm interested in maybe a Lego book. I, I didn't even know that there was a program about Legos that your library offers. This is a different box here. We call this a placard. A placard is just kind of like a tiny little billboard or advertisement at the top of your search results where libraries can customize to match, again, their individual collections, their individual programs, their individual databases. So this was created by Salina Public Library staff. They would have tied in this placard to display when certain keywords, keywords are searched. They might have chosen Lego, blocks, children. Again, the keywords are limitless and it just depends on what your staff decides works for your library. Just thinking about what audience is interested in your programs and then tying that in to your keyword search. This also is hyperlinked to Atlanta Public Library and Friends for Challenging Lego Builds. This program is made for ch uh, children K through three. So if you want to learn more, it's hyperlinked. I click on it. It's going to clearly let me know when the next 
multiple sessions of the Lego Club R. This is really great. I click from here, sign up. So I was just thinking I wanted a Lego book and now I found out that there's multiple sessions of this Lego club that I could take my child to. Also, I just wanted to show you another way. I also just wanted to show you a different way you can search for events right through your catalog. Instead of a general keyword search, I'm gonna go over to Lego and then instead of the in the library catalog, I'm gonna select events. And when you do this search, you'll notice that it's a little bit different. This will show you now first the events that are upcoming, and then it also links the Explore More box is different now too. So it also links to some of the most popular Lego related titles. So you can do it either way, either search, and it's a nice little way to teach patrons um, how to best interact with their catalog. Another great um, example of promoting programs and e-resources that I want to show you the Carnegie Stout Public Library. Well, maybe I have a trip coming up. A lot of things were canceled for the last couple of years. Um, I'm finally able to do some travel and I'm interested in learning a different language. So I just want to see maybe what books um, the library has on that topic. So I go ahead and search language. And again, you'll see a placard similar to the Lego example that we saw before of transparent language online. Um, I think transparent language online and mango languages are probably some of the two biggest databases. Right here, um, I can see right away that there's over 100 languages to choose from and that I can download free language learning software and start learning right now. I'm just going to do another search similarly for Spanish and you'll see that this also pops up. They've set keywords here for Spanish, for language. We can try French, see if it pops up. It's completely up to you and your library staff to, on how to set that up. We know that you spend a lot of money on these databases and maybe your patrons don't even know what a database is. They didn't know that you offered it. Um, some libraries have dozens and dozens of databases and resources that they want to promote. And just some other examples of how um, libraries have used this, something like a Learning Express library when someone searches the SATs or an ACT, um, a keyword like homework to promote something like a tutor.com, and it doesn't have to be something that you've even subscribed to. So this, there's a lot of great free and non-subscription based external sites that you might see value in for your patrons. So I'm thinking of like the Khan Academy for coding and classes. There's the Goodwill uh, GCF Free Learn. Um, again, really great if uh, maybe to tie into a Word or Excel search. You know, a lot of times those books sort of like walk out the door and they don't come back or there's there's only so many changes that you might only order like one edition of the 2021 2022 version so a website is going to have more up-to-date information i also just wanted to point out that the menus along the look different so you get to choose which menus you would like and how it's laid out so it's a completely different feel for your patrons and your site they have a um, learn right here that connects with all of their learning resources. And this actually takes you out to their library website. Research, this shows all of their different research databases. So they've connected all of that right to their Aspen catalog. So these libraries are in the same consortium. So most likely they share a lot of the same resources and materials, but they're still able to maintain their branch branding. And this means that they can also promote their own events and special collections unique to them. They are both um, actually using Aspen Discovery for their entire website. So you can see that these right away look different from, for example, the Carnegie that we just looked at before. So this would be its main page. Whereas Meadville Public Library and Benson Public Library or Memorial Library, um, they've designed this to have this individual look and feel. So you clearly know when you're on one versus the other. This is all included um, in the regular Aspen package. So you don't need to know any CSS. Although if you do, you can really make um, a lot of customizations with the look and feel of Aspen. Um, but even if you don't have that coding or um, list CSS knowledge, you can still build out custom pages with our web page templates and kind of like a drag and drop um, format. 
So you'll notice right away how it looks a little bit different where they're promoting things like Libby, Beanstalk, and Hoopla right on their main, main Aspen page. So this will take me directly out to Libby and their collection. You can also click on resources and again, see how their menus are different than somebody like Carnegie's, it's all custom customizable. If you click on resources, this is a um, Aspen Discovery built-in template. They have all of their different extra resources that they have. Oh, wow, they even have an auto repair resource. It's super cool. So that would be something if I searched car, it might be nice for them to make a little placard that describes this database. Let's talk a little bit more about e-content. So first off, so let's talk a little bit more about e-content. So Aspen Discovery integrates by API with Hoopla, Overdrive, slash Libby, um, RB Digital, Access 360, Cloud Library, and EBSCO Discovery Service. Others can be added through a process of side loading or indexing. Um, a great way, another great way to advertise these, which we haven't talked about, is through the browse categories. Browse categories, this is what we call browse categories here, kind of like creating an in-library display, but online. So the look is very visually engaging. I think about walking like through the aisles and browsing covers and looking through displays. Um, and it's similar to the Netflix or Hulu type look and feel of streaming services that a lot of us are really comfortable and familiar with. These, again, library created, it's up to them and what they want to promote in their collection. But if I clicked on fiction, for example, um, and I was interested in maybe in audiobooks, I could click on a title that I liked. So let's just say Wonder. And you can see right away that I have this as a book, an ebook, juvenile, CD, and a play away. And if I click on more info, I can even see more like this that are available right now. Um, and the more less, more like this section only shows titles that are currently available. So we're not showing patrons something that they're gonna have to wait a long time for. This is accessible right now. Again, if I just did a keyword search for this as well, come up and I like these facets on the side. So I have, I know that it's available in Hoopla, it's available in Overdrive. If I click on the title, I get even more information. Something like Goodreads, it can bring in all of that information. Um, additionally, like something like Novelist that you subscribe to, it can all be linked in. So let's talk a little bit about what the patron sees when they're using Aspen Discovery. So I'm actually going to just use one of our test uh, sites. We have a test patron named Sam Wise. I save my login information. So I'm just going to sign Sam in. And right away, I see my account. So I see I have nine items checked out. I have four overdue, better get those back. I have eight holds and I have one ready for pickup. Um, I also see based off of titles that I've rated that there are books that are available that I might wanna check out next time. You can also see checked out materials here. And clearly again, we have the Overdrive integration, Hoopla, Cloud Library, Access 360. So you can get a good overview or like snapshot of all of your checkouts in one place. So you don't need to log into Hoopla, log into Libby. Do I have that checked out as a physical book or an ebook or an audiobook? This ties everything together so that you can see it all at once. So if I wanted to see my checkouts, I have nine total things checked out across all platforms. So this could include physical materials, again, Hoopla, Overdrive. So when I'm, all, when I'm in all, I can see everything all in one place. I can clearly see that this is overdue. I need to return it. Maybe I want to renew my checkout. Maybe I want to read online. I can also return it. I don't have to go, this is an overdrive. I don't need to go sign in separately to overdrive. Let's see what else. Overdrive, I have an audiobook. I have an Access 360 book. Um, so I can go ahead if I'm logged in. I can open it, but I don't need to. I can control all of my accounts in one place. 
if you wanted it broken out further, it can be broken out by physical materials, again, overdrive, Hoopla, I don't have anything right now, Cloud Library, Access 360. Similarly, this that was just checkouts, but similarly with the titles on hold. This is great for power users, but also for people that just really don't know the distinction between all the different types of content. I mean, even th something like Overdrive versus Libby can be so confusing because things are changing so quickly in the e-resource world and the ebook world that if this is just is one website, you just log in and it's much clearer to the patrons. Thank you, Cal, for um, demoing all of the great options to integrate and showing off some of the awesome partners that we have and what they've done in their site. We have two more great sessions that are coming up for the end of this year. In November, on Tuesday the 16th, we will be covering implementing Aspen Discovery within your dis consortium. So if you are thinking about moving to Aspen Discovery and you're in a consortium, this is a great time to get to know how Aspen works, how our team works with you one-on-one -on -one to ensure a smooth transition for your discovery system. And you get to talk with Addy, who's one of our amazing implementation specialists with Aspen Discovery. And then in December, we'll be doing Aspen Discovery 101, where we go over all of the great functionality that Aspen Discovery has um, in the system. And for all of you that are on today, if you have any questions that we can answer, um, we'd be happy to answer those in chat. And we also would love to um, set up some time to talk to you if you are interested in uh, moving to Aspen Discovery. And Bill is our amazing Aspen sales consultant, and he would love to set up a time to speak with you and answer any questions that you or your library may have. So Jesse, can you... Um show a result a consortia versus individual library? Absolutely. Let me, I'll pull up a, um, a few examples here and share them on my screen for you. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna pull up is Click, who is one of our consortiums in Colorado, and they are using Koha as their ILS. So they refer to their catalog as Aspen Cat. And this allows the user to come in and they can perform a search in the system. So if we come in here, I'll stick with Cal's theme and we'll, we'll do a search for wonder. Um, that will bring back the results in our system. Now you'll notice the first thing that it shows is the entire collection here. So that's showing us the entire collection of all the consortiums in the system. Now, if we look over here, we can see the full Aspen Cat catalog. So anything that we have in the system, and then we can even take it a step further and go available now or available online. So the user does get that option. Now there are some great resources for um, consortiums. And what I'll do is I'll pull up um, an example here of um, what that'll look like for the end user. If you do have a multi, um, system where you want them to select from their a list of um, libraries in the consortium, you can set that up. So here's another example here. So this allows the user to come in, they can select their home library, and it also gives them an option to remember that at the bottom, and then they can select that library. And when they go back, the next time it will remember that for them. Or of course, you know, they come to the library website and they click on it. Here's another example now that I'll show where you can see a specified information. So here we're looking at Pines and Plains Library. Now, if you can see in my URL, they are part of Aspen Cat, which is the, the Click Consortium. So I'm gonna do that same search now for Wonder in the system. And when we get our results back, you'll notice that I can look at just the Pines and Plains libraries. So I have options, we can do entire collection or just pines and plains. And this is one of the great benefits of working with uh, Bywater Solutions and Aspen Discovery is, you know, our main goal is to make sure that our libraries can provide access to all those fabulous resources that are available. And this is just one way that you can decide what works better for your consortium. Do you want your users to see the entire collection first or do you want them to see what is in your library? So as I scroll through here now, then when we look at these results, you'll notice that 
it will tell me right away, okay, a book is available at another library and so is the CD. But if I wanted to right now, I could um, go to OverDrive or Cloud Library and check it out. And then there is a PlayAway version um, that is on the shelf. So these are just a few great ways that you can set your consortium up for searching, viewing results of an individual library versus the consortium. And there, there's really a lot of great um, resources out there. And um, Jerry, I know you asked the question, we can send you a couple different examples where they're using Koha as the ILS and Aspen um, as the front-based discovery for their users. Are there other questions that we can answer for you all? Okay, well, we want to thank you all for coming today um, and joining us for our presentation for Aspen Discovery. As always, if there's any questions that we can answer, please reach out. Bill would love to set up a time to speak with you. And um, a big thank you to Cal for presenting such um, wonderful examples of what our libraries are doing. Have a great day, everyone.